I'm Peter Gray. I'm a research professor in psychology at Boston College. I'm an evolutionary psychologist, which means that I'm interested in human nature and how that nature came about by natural selection. I'm especially interested in the nature of human children and most especially in those aspects of children's nature that came about by natural selection to serve their education. You know, all the things that we think of as natural to children, as special to children, their curiosity, their playfulness, their willfulness, their sociability, their wanting to know what other people are doing, their wanting to, 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 um, to be involved in the activities that are going on around them, all of these characteristics of childhood came about by natural selection to serve the function of their education. And I've been looking at the question of what would happen if we just allowed these natural abilities of children to continue to function in children who reach what we call school age. You know, we generally today think of education as something that is done to children by professional educators. But from a biological perspective, education has always been something that children do for themselves. They come into the world biologically designed to figure it out, to learn what it is that they need to learn to grow effectively into adulthood. One of the ways that I've looked into education is to interview uh, and survey anthropologists who have studied uh, children in hunter-gatherer cultures. And what I've learned from every one of these anthropologists who've, who've lived with and observed uh, banned hunter-gatherer cultures in various parts of the world is that hunter-gatherers understood that children are naturally designed to learn through play and exploration. And so they allow children complete freedom from the age of about four on through their mid-teenage years to play and explore essentially all day long. And what the, what the children play at are exactly the kinds of skills that are important for them to learn. So the boys play at hunting and tracking, the girls play at finding roots, and they play at cooking, and they play at, um, at uh, childcare, they play at the kinds of things that are essential to learn if you're going to grow up to be a successful adult in that culture. Not because any adults are requiring them to play in those ways, but because they simply by nature look around and say, these are the things that are important to learn, and so they play in those ways. Isn't it interesting that children in our culture today are drawn to computers? Well, what's the most important tool for children to learn in our culture today? Clearly, the computer. No, almost no matter what job they go into, they're going to have to be good at computers. So this is part of the evidence that children come into the world biologically designed to figure out what it is that they need to know and to go ahead and, and learn that. Another way that I've uh, looked into children's natural ways of educating themselves is to uh, study children in our culture who don't go to um, school or school as we generally know it. Um, two groups that I've studied are children who are unschooled, who are uh, homeschooled but by the philosophy that's often called unschooling, where the children are in charge of their own education, where parents play a facilitative role and they help connect the child to the larger culture, but they don't teach the child in any deliberate way, they don't test the child. And I've also studied children at a remarkable alternative school called the Sudbury Valley School in Framingham, Massachusetts, not far from uh, Boston College where I work. And um, this is a school where children are also in charge of their own education. It's a school setting, but it's a school that doesn't give courses unless a group of kids want to have a course and then they'll organize one. Uh, but it's a school where there's all kinds of opportunities for learning, where children interact with one another freely, where children can interact with the adult staff members freely, but where there's no coercive education, there's nobody, there's no set curriculum. Every child is in charge of their own education. Now, what's remarkable is that when I've studied the graduates in, in bo of both uh, unschooling and of uh, Sudbury Valley School, 
I find they do very well in the world. Um, those who want to go on to higher education, which turns out to be the majority of them, uh, don't have any difficulty getting into colleges, including uh, very elite colleges. Uh, they don't have any difficulty finding the kinds of employment that they're looking for. And so here we have something that flies really in the face of what most people believe today. Most people believe that if you're going to be successful in our culture today, you've got to go to school as we usually know it. You've got to do those assignments. You've got to do just what you're told to do by teachers. But here's people who are not doing any of that. They're figuring out themselves what it is that they want to learn. They're pursuing their own interests and they're going on very well educated. So I've looked into how this happens and it happens, for example, at the Sudbury Valley School. I've done research in which uh, one of my graduate students and I uh, looked at especially age mixed play at the school. Children are not in this school um, assigned to classrooms by age. They're not assigned to classrooms at all. They can go wherever they wish. And what we've observed there is children play across wide age ranges. And when children are playing across age, they are, the younger children are learning from the older children. They're, in, they're learning uh, advanced physical skills. They're learning advanced mental skills. They're learning in every, every interaction where a younger child is playing with an older child. The older child is, in a sense, teaching the younger child and bringing the younger child up to a higher level of activity than the child would otherwise be capable of doing. So for example, just to take one example, um, often I've observed there children who can't read playing games with children who can read that involve reading. They might be computer games. The child who can read is reading the words on the screen and is in that way teaching the younger child to read. Um, children playing outdoors. Older children are helping younger children climb trees or climb up boulders. Um, every interaction between an older child and a younger child is an instance of learning. Children in their play figure out what they really like to do. They try different things. They discover what their passions are. And in many cases, I've found, they go on to careers in those areas when they have the opportunity to really pursue those careers. So this is, um, this is something that I think that we as a society have kind of forgotten. That we think of education as something that we adults um, control. That children are passive in it, that children are supposed to listen and do what they're told to do. We, all, we call this work as distinct from play. And yet what I'm arguing is that children naturally educate themselves. They naturally educate themselves through play. And we have become a world in which we are increasingly depriving children of the opportunity to do that. So whether or not we um, we design schools where children can really play, at least, I would argue, it's really, really important that we provide children plenty of opportunity for play when they're not in school. Plenty of opportunity to play with other kids, away from adults, to play in age-mixed groups. Increasingly, we are putting children in school-like activities even when they're out of school, adult-directed sports, adult-directed classes outside of school. My argument is that if we want children to really learn what they love to do, if, we want ch if I want our children to learn how to control their own behavior, to learn how to make their own decisions, to learn how to be creative, we have to bring self-directed play back into the child's world.